Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see in front of me, I've got my brand new G87 BMW M2 that I want to show you guys around. If you've been following the channel and specifically watched our last video, you'll see that unfortunately I encountered a number of issues on my E90 BMW 335i, which recently meant I had to let go of that car. If you want to find out more, I would suggest you watch that previous video because I go into quite a bit of detail about the issues I had, but ultimately it meant that I needed to get out of that and get into something new. And given the problems I'd had and, and what I need to use a car for, I was really looking for something newer. Now there's a number of cars I was looking at. The Toyota GR Supra was definitely one, but I was also interested in the G42 BMW M240i. However, when I drove the G87, this car just felt so much more special than any of those two. And of course that S58 engine just has so much appeal. I do want to say a special shout out to the guys at Virtue BMW T-Side for really helping bring all this together because I was in quite a sticky situation with my 335i, but thankfully we were able to make all this come together and work. So anyway, I'm really excited to show you guys around this car. Let's take a look. So we've talked a little bit about why I've ended up with a new car, but I think the question still exists of why I bought a G87 BMW M2. Now, I've been very keen actually to get into an M car. I've obviously had a Z4 Coupe, which is a non-M. I've had the 335i, I've obviously got my E30 Touring as well, but I was keen to just kind of have that M experience. To me, the G87 may well be the last true M car. We've obviously seen the new M5 that's come out recently. It's a lot heavier, it's a hybrid. I just don't know how much longer we're gonna have cars like this around. So I was very keen to try and get into something, albeit a new M car. But I think reality is these new M cars are just so easy to live with now. I know that some people have used that as a criticism, but they are incredibly comfortable. But yet on the other side of them, they're extremely well performance orientated. And I think they can do a fantastic job when you're pushing on and potentially out on track too. So I'm certainly keen to try and get my share of that experience if you like. And yeah, I'm just really happy with the car. Now under that power dome, we do of course have the S58 B30 engine. This is of course BMW M's three liter twin turbocharged straight six engine. In the M2, it produces 460 PS, 406 foot pounds. So it's a lot of power really. Nought to 60 comes in around 4.1 seconds and the top speed is around 155 miles an hour, which is of course electronically limited. Now there is one point I just wanna to touch on in terms of the drivetrain. I've actually decided to go for the ZF eight speed automatic transmission. As you may know, there is of course a six speed manual, which you can opt this car to have. However, everything I've really read about that transmission is it's not actually that well matched to the powertrain. The gear ratios are obviously much longer in the manual. Apparently the shift quality also isn't that great. And I think overall, the S58, as we've seen it matched with the ZF8 speed in, in other M cars, it seems to get on with that transmission really, really well. And the gears are very closely spaced. So of course you're sort of really just going through the gears very quickly, which I think really gives much more of a, a sense of speed, which is certainly the way it felt when I drove the, the test car. Now, currently my car is still on the braking period. So you'll find out much more about the driving dynamics when we do our review, which will be in a few months time once everything is broken in, I've got to grips with the car a bit more. Otherwise it wouldn't be very interesting because it can't really rev it out too high at the minute. But what I will say is the initial impressions of this engine are just fantastic. It seems to have so much torque makes a fantastic sound actually. I know there is a bit of fakery through the speakers, but when it's in the sort of least aggressive mode, it's mostly authentic sound. It really does sound fantastic actually. And again, just paired to that gearbox, I can tell that once I can fully open the taps on it, it's gonna be really a fantastic drivetrain. So I can't wait to be doing that. So I don't think I'd be wrong to say that the G87 styling has certainly been a little bit controversial and probably quite divisive at times. Let's talk a little bit through the spec on my car. So as you can probably tell straight away, this is the BMW individual frozen pure gray color. I think this actually looks fantastic. The styling on the G87 has certainly grown on me over time. I think when this car was first launched back in 2023, you'll probably remember it was launched in that Zandvoort blue color. It's kind of like a baby blue. Some of the leaked press photos maybe weren't the most flattering, it has to be said. And I think in general, the glossier paints maybe don't make this car look quite as good as, as the matte paints do. So for me, I think this paint really suits the car very, very well. 
In terms of some of the other options I've got, I've got the carbon roof um, and I've also got the carbon interior trim. You'll probably see as well, there's the red brake calipers behind the silver and black 930M wheels. And actually you might notice, but the wheels are staggered. So we've got a 19 inch alloy on the front and a 20 inch alloy on the back. I personally think the fronts look really, really good because they've got a nice chunky sidewall, whereas the rears are a little bit narrower. Now, I think overall the styling on the new M2 is very, very aggressive, perhaps almost a bit too much at times. You'll see on the front, there's kind of like a power dome on the bonnet, which I think looks fantastic from a side profile, which is why I was keen to kind of show this. You'll also notice some really classic BMW design. We've got the Hofmeister kink on the rear window here. Again, this is just harking back to the old times and the sort of really classic design that you, you seem to get on these BMWs. On the rear, there's a nice little lip spoiler, which I think is an absolute must have. The only thing that's a little bit weird is it kind of looks like an afterthought, but it suits the car really, really well. and I think finishes off the rear end very nicely indeed. So moving to the rear of the G87, I think this is where it's really, really aggressive. This rear bumper is pretty insane, actually. There's so many different shapes and things going on. You can see there's a lot of kind of squared off areas, which I think is the overall theme with the design of the new M2. It's actually quite interesting because to me, it really has a lot in common with the E30 M3, which of course was a very kind of squared off boxy design from the 1980s. I think we can really kind of see a lot of that in the G87. Now, as I've mentioned, there's a lip spoiler on the back here, which I think again is, is a must have. I think that really finishes off the rear. You'll also probably notice these are smoked taillights and that's part of it being a BMW individual paint. So you get the smoke taillights as well. And of course the quad exhaust, which are real pipes. And I think they look way better than some of the ones we've seen recently, which are kind of the wide squared shapes, which are usually just a bumper trim. So these are real exhausts. The thing that's amazing is I don't think there are any fake vents on this car. At least I haven't been able to find them. If you, if you know of some, please let me know below. But have BMW finally listened to what everyone's been saying about styling all this time? It's nice to see them gone, I'll say that much. The front of the car is also quite obviously very, very aggressive. I think one of the interesting facts about this is it's essentially the same width as the G82 M4. The platform is very much shared. This is just a shorter version. It's around 200 millimeters shorter than the M4. So it's got a really, really wide track. And the other thing you'll notice is just the number of intakes, really sort of like gaping holes on the front of it, really. We've got ones at either side. Again, everything's very squared off and boxy, which personally I really like. And you can see right down in there, you can see into the intercooler and the oil cooler. So again, I think really kind of being in people's faces about just the level of performance that this car is at. I do just want to give a special mention to the wheels. I've obviously already mentioned that they're staggered front to rear but I personally love the look of the six piston brake calipers behind. So it's a 380 millimeter disc on the front, 360 millimeters on the back. But again, it just looks so aggressive with this wheel setup. Personally, I'm not a big fan of black wheels at all. So for me, having at least some silver on here was a must have. There's actually now an LCI version of the M2, which again has some slightly different paint choices. I think the power has been bumped up, but you can also get completely silver wheels, which I think look even better. But again, you, you could refinish them if you really wanted to, but I think these look really good, especially with the paintwork on the car. And again, just such an aggressive look. So moving to the interior then of the new G87 M2, I think this is where there's a very, very notable difference over the previous generation. I think the overall price point to which this car is built is obviously jumped up massively, which maybe that's one of the criticisms of it. However, the quality of this interior is just, it's unreal. It really is a huge step up. Now in mine, I've obviously got the carbon fiber interior trim, which again, I think kind of lifts the interior to another level again. So you get carbon fiber all across the dashboard here, down the center console, and also some inserts on the steering wheel and on the gear shift paddles as well, which I just think it looks really nice. These seats, I didn't get the bucket seats. Now you might be aware of this because it, it's definitely come up as a criticism as well. They basically only include the bucket seats now within the track package, which is about nine and a half grand or something crazy like that. There are much more aggressive seats, the bucket seats, uh, and maybe aren't as well matched to daily driving as the regular seats. To be honest, these seats are still really, really supportive, and I've found them to be very, very comfortable on some of the longer journeys I've done in this car so far. So to me, that's no problem at all. I really like these seats. I think they look fantastic. And you'll also notice the BMW M colors as well on either side, which is a very nice touch. On that note, you might also notice the sort of trickle law BMW M colors 
in the door cards as well. And these illuminate at night again, which is just, it makes it feel so much more special. The driving position, absolutely fantastic. The seat goes incredibly low, actually too low. I've had to move it up slightly, which I've never really had in a car before. There is, of course, a huge amount of infotainment. A lot of it, probably not going to be using it that much, to be honest. But actually, I found the iDrive system is really good and easy to navigate, and I've already got to grips with that very quickly. The wide screen makes it very easy to see things. But what I will say is the instrument cluster, again, kind of moving away, obviously, completely now from an anything analog. It does make it a little bit harder to read. However, you've got a heads up display, which really kind of makes up for that because it makes it a lot easier to see speed. And you can also configure that to show things like your navigation instructions and also get a rev counter up there as well, which is a nice touch. Of course, this being the ZF8 speed, we've got the shifter here. We've got the M logo embossed on the top, which I think is a nice touch. But yeah, in general, I really, really like this interior. It's very, very comfortable. And yeah, looking forward to spending more time in it. So anyway, that concludes the walk around of my G87 M2. I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think. I don't know if any of you guys are actually owners of these cars. Please do let me know in the comments below if you are. So I think that brings on to the question of what are my plans with this car? Well, of course, as I mentioned, there's gonna be a review in due course once everything's broken in, once I've got to grips with the car a little bit. There'll also be just the general array of content we'll probably do a living with, but if there's anything specifically that you would like to know about this car, please do let me know and we can look to feature that in our future content. Unfortunately, as nice as it is to get into older cars and as much as I really, really love older cars, the reality is when things go wrong, and you're relying on it as a daily driver, it can really be quite problematic. For those of you wondering, I do still have my BMW E30 Touring. So if you like, that's my kind of piece of the old car era. And of course that is a manual gearbox as well. And I very much enjoy driving that. I'm sure it'll be a completely different driving experience to the G87. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe if you're new to the channel. We're really just trying to grow it and get as much content out there as we can for you guys. And as I say, if there's anything you want to see, please do let us know below. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.